Hi and welcome back. Last week I was concentrating on uh, gluing this chopped down Instax wide camera film um, holder and transport mechanism onto the back of this uh, Polaroid 100 and getting it a bit feared in. If you missed that last week's video, click there'll be a link up here in the top corner. This week I'm concentrating on getting the drive roller system installed and working which we mounted in this area. I've modelled this little drive gearbox. It consists of a housing with an input shaft which will be driven by a hand crank driving the two existing gears which came from the Bittenstax wide camera. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is use a slitting saw to slice a to slice a slit across here to write to uh, drive that dog. Years ago, my dad gave me a whole bunch of assorted um, slitting saws. Now they come in two. Th these ones got two different um, bore sizes: this uh, three quarter inch and one inch. I've made a an arbor for the three quarter inch, but of course the one that I need for this job, the two mil, is an inch arbor. So we get to a point where I have to make a tool to get a job done. I just realized there's a second option. This is um, 1.3 millimeters and I've also got a thinner blade which is 0.65 millimeters. So if I stack the two blades on the other, that'll be two millimeters. And for this job, I think that's what I'm going to do. Well, that was lucky. In this case, the blades even have exactly the same number of teeth, so they match up beautifully, and that gives us our two millimeters roughly. Next up, it just needs a little deburring. Here I'm printing the bearing block which mounts and locates the shaft. This is the drive shaft with the drive cog installed. The next task is to mill two flats and drill a hole through for the crank mechanism and then machine down the excess length. This is an exploded view of the drive components. So we've got the two gears into the rollers, one and two, the drive shaft, the bearing block which the, which, uh, the drive shaft turns in, crank which drives on those uh, flats there, the pin which holds the crank onto it. Down this end we've got a screw, the handle, uh, it goes through the... Time to assemble this thing. Next up, gear goes in. Handle goes over the top. Gives us a crank assembly. I was kind of worried that that uh, thin wall thickness wouldn't be enough, especially with the way the striations go, uh, and that concern was correct. I'm going to have to make this arm again in aluminium, but for now I'll try and just use it like this for the first attempts. Since my first crank handle failed almost immediately with just not enough strength in this 
plastic wall. I just quickly whipped up a, an aluminium replacement. Nothing pretty, but it's only a prototype. Right, let's test this out. First up, let's just test it with an old dark slide. So we'll throw that in. Try kicking it up with the film kick out mechanism. Which doesn't want to work very well, but if we manually feed it into the roller, we can see that with a bit of effort, it comes out. Next up, a photo in an old film pack. All right, this looks like it might work. Well, it looks like the drive mechanism's pretty much a success. The only problem seems to be catching the film with the kick-out hook. Now this is basically original. I want to try this with a, with a new film pack, but to do that I've got to first close up that area, which will be a light leak, and reinstall the lens. I'm going to finish this video today, so I've got something to post so you can see the progress, and the next video will be reinstalling the lens and trying it out. Thanks for watching.